Hello everyone. Welcome back to the new session on canning technology and value addition of seafoods. The course is offered by NPTEL. In the last two classes, we have seen composition and nutritional quality of seafoods and muscle structure of the seafoods. In today's class, we will be dealing about spoilages that are very common to seafoods and the reason for these spoilages. Now, to understand what is a spoilage, fish being a perishable commodity because of its high moisture content is prone to spoilage. In the last class, we had seen that it contains high amounts of protein and lipid and it's a cheap source of protein. And these pose as a reason for the perishability of the fish. Fish contains high amounts of moisture, high amounts of water. And uh, because of this moisture content, the muscle tissue may undergo degradation. It could be of enzymatic or microbial degradation. And since it contains high amounts of protein, this protein denaturation and lipid denaturation is also very common and for these reasons uh, the fish need to be preserved immediately and spoilages usually it starts immediately after the fish is captured or killed. It refers to the contamination that happens uh, because of the undesirable changes that are caused in flavor of the fish, color, texture or order or overall appearance of the fish. Generally sometimes spoilage of fish is also called putrefaction but scientifically, putrefaction means denaturation or degradation of protein molecules to amines and smaller molecules, aldehydes and ketones, which cause changes in order and smell or uh, flavor. But uh, sometimes these two words are used interchangeably. And uh, generally, the spoilage characteristics include color change, fishy smell or a sour smell, increased uh, sliminess on the skins and scales, then loosening of scales, and discoloration of backbone, loss of firmness of the fish tissue, all these are associated with the spoilage characteristics. These are actually sensory characteristics which one can observe on the surface of the fish and uh, they can make out whether the fish has been spoiled or not. So this figure, it shows whether a fish is good or bad. If you look at the figure here, the gills shown on the lower part, they are bright red in color, so it indicates that the fish is fresh and it is uh, good for consumption. But however, on the upper figure, you can see that gills have turned grayish. So that is that shows the spoilage, the spoilage has started. And similarly, in the case of eyes, in, uh, when the fish is good, it is bulged and dark in color, whereas when the fish has spoiled, it becomes faded and it uh, shrunk. And again, the scales on the surface of the uh, skin it comes out easily in the spoiled fish. So these are some of the sensory indicators or organoleptic indicators by which one can make out whether the fish has spoiled or not. So this is a tabulated slide where you can note down the sensory parameters that is order, eyes, color, flesh, uh, nature and we can discriminate or we can identify if the fish is fresh or spoiled. For example, if when we consider the order, in the fresh fish, it will be a fishy order, but in the spoiled fish, it will turn to putrid or sour order because of the production of lactic acids and degradation of protein molecules. So again, the eyes will be shiny and bulging in fresh fish, but it will become cloudy and it will depress in the spoiled fish. The color will be bright in the case of fresh fish, but it will become faded. Similarly, on the flesh, when one put a pressure with the thumb, the thumb impression will be retained in the spoiled fish whereas in the fresh fish, its body will be firm and elastic. And scales, again, it will be bright and firm in the case of fresh water fish or fresh fish. In the case of spoiled fish, it will come out easily. And muscle tissue, it might be white or red, but it may become or turn pinkish. But then don't confuse it with the pinkish uh, musculature because again, uh, the musculature we have seen uh, in the last class that it is of three types, that is red, white and pink. This pinkish color in the spoiled fish is because of the deterioration. And gills again, uh, like I said in the beginning, it becomes a dull brown uh, or gray in the spoiled fish. And again, for all these reasons, uh, the degradation of proteins and lipids, they cause reduction in the pH, which is uh, shown by the reduction of pH. Uh, the pH, it comes down to uh, 6, below 6 in case of spoiled fish. Usually, the flat fish, they undergo spoilage uh, more rapidly. So again, we had seen what is a round fish and what is a flat fish. So flat fishes, they undergo deterioration or foliage rapidly than the round fish because they undergo rigor mortis rapidly, that it, it is more faster than the round fish. And again, 
It is also because of the deterioration of the unsaturated fatty acids that are seen in the flat fishes. Uh, the other common factors, the characteristics what we have seen in the previous slides, they are the intrinsic characters that is uh, seen on the fish or on the animal. But there are other reasons which also contribute to the spoilage. That is uh, one foremost reason is the quality of water. The quality of water can be the water or the environment which the animal has been captured or it has been uh, taken or it can be the water which is used for processing or for other preservation activities. So if the quality of water is not good, it may be the reason for the contamination. And generally the microbial contaminations uh, like contamination from Pseudomonas, Acetinobacter, Moraxella species, Alkaligens, Micrococcus, Flavobacterium, all these bacteria, the contaminations from this uh, bacteria, they generally happen from the water sources. And northern waters being ice cold, the cold loving microorganisms, they survive in these conditions. In our water conditions or tropical water conditions, we generally find mesophiles. In the gut system, you will find uh, there are numerous types of microorganisms, but main spoilage microorganisms like Pseudomonas, Bacillus, Flavobacterium, they survive in the gut of uh, fish. And once the gut has degraded, it comes out of, uh, to the surface and it causes uh, spoilage. In freshwater fish, we generally find Aeromonas, uh, Lactobacillus, Alkaligens, Streptococcus, etc. And shellfish also, we find same similar kind of microbes. And uh, apart from the usual ones, we also see Proteus, Acetinobacter, Muraxella, etc. The surface slime, they definitely the gills, the slime, and the intestinal fluid. These are the main places where we find the microbial loads are very high. And uh, slime, it, uh, it was reported that they can contribute to 100 to millions of uh, microbes. Uh, that is, one square centimeter can contain this many number of microorganisms. Similarly, in intestinal fluid, it can range between 1,000 to 100 millions. And in gills, it can also go up to 1,000 to millions. So it is just to show that these are the main sites from where the microbial contamination starts. Immediately, uh, the fish is captured. We have to wash it out so that the slime is removed and also degutting that's why uh, we said in the beginning that degutting is the only process which has to be done immediately so that the microbial contamination or the escape of microorganism from these places can be prevented and also we have to be careful how the fish are handled with the equipments if the handling is not proper it is unhygienic or the the contact surfaces of animal they are not properly cleaned or not hygienic they may also transfer microorganisms to the fish or to the animal then of course we have seen uh, moisture, fat, protein, these are the uh, main components that undergo deterioration. The microorganisms may survive on these macro components, but this only happens when the temperature is ambient. That is the temperature, the optimum temperature for the microbial growth is, uh, is provided or it is uh, there. Only then the microbes will survive on these uh, macro components and they will cause spoilage. So therefore it is necessary to play with the uh, temperature that is to reduce the temperature immediately that is uh, chilling or freezing or increase the temperature that is either you go for pasteurization or canning. Then uh, generally the fish spoilage can classify them into three types that is enzymatic, auto oxidation and microbial. So uh, the arrow mark it moves from uh, left to right it is just to indicate that ambient temperature that, that is temperature is the most important factor. Though moisture is the important factor for the microbial growth, so by maintaining or modulating the water content, we can control the moisture, we can control the microbial growth, but if the temperature is appropriate, it's very hard to control the microbial growth. If you see in this line, the temperature is the most important factor, and next is the unhygienic handling. So therefore, while handling the fish, persons should be very careful. The hands should be cleaned and washed properly so that uh, there are no contamination happens from the hand to the animal. Now let's see each uh, type of spoilage that is autolysis or enzymatic degradation. Uh, as the name suggests, enzymatic degradation, it happens because of the enzyme that is enzymes present in the body of the fish, they participate or they cause autolysis. So during autolysis, the enzymes, they escape from the cell, that is cell lysis happens and uh, from inside the cell, these enzymes, they escape to the external environment and they cause degradation of other macromolecules and thereby they release or the micromolecules are formed or some other metabolites are formed which uh, affect the flavor and order of the fish. And one such example is conversion of ATP to hypoxanthin. 
So whenever the animal is dead, it, uh, the anaerobic uh, degradation is seen or glycogen is degraded to lactic acid. At the same time, uh, ATV molecules are also decomposed and it is converted to, this is the flow chart how it decomposes. That is ATP is one molecule of ATP, phosphate is removed from the ATP and it is converted to ADP. Similarly, it is converted to AMP, IMP. From ATP to IMP, it is a slow reaction. It takes around 24 hours or less. But uh, from IMP to hypoxanthin, it's a fast reaction. And once the hypoxanthin is formed, it gives bitterness or bitter taste to the product. So therefore, hypoxanthin is taken as an as a indicator or biomarker to determine the freshness of the fish. Again, a lot of enzymes are involved in this. It is not a simple conversion that is uh, ATP is converted to IMP or hypoxanthin, it's a step-by-step -step process where enzymes are involved like ATPase, AMP, deaminase, uh, nucleotidase, so you know, syn nucleosidase, xanthine oxidase. So these enzymes, they play an important role in the degradation of ATP molecules. And generally, the freshness of uh, fish, it is indicated by K value, which is expressed in percentage, and it's the ratio of inosine and hypoxanthin over uh, the degradative products. Uh, from ATP to hypoxanthin and since it is uh, expressed in percentage we are multiplying it with 100. So again uh, the fish uh, when it, it is killed or it is captured it enters into the rigor mortis again enzymes both exogenous and endogenous enzymes are involved in, in the rigor mortis and it causes uh, these are proteolytic enzymes and transglutaminases which helps in the rigor uh, formation or, or starting of rigor. And uh, belly bursting is yet another activity that is seen which is related to enzymatic degradation and uh, digestive enzymes they degrade the belly part and usually we, we see this kind of scenes are seen in case of sardines where the belly get bursts and the gut content it just comes out. So belly bursting is another activity which is uh, it happening because of the enzymatic degradation. And autolysis, it also causes uh, black spot formation in the shrimps. Uh, though it is not uh, toxic or harmful for the human beings, if it is consumed in this case, it will not harm the individual, but it uh, interferes with the aesthetic appearance of the product. So if a person is going to buy shrimp and he sees that the shrimp has black colors or black spots, uh, naturally, they won't prefer to buy the product. So that is uh, why marketability or the cost of the product will come down because of this thing. And again, protein uh, degrading enzymes, they release amines, carbon dioxide, ammonia, fatty acids, which releases or which causes foul smell. Order comes down or fishy order, it, it, it turns to sour or putrid. The next spoilage is uh, bacterial spoilage or microbial spoilage. We had seen that the surface of uh, the fish that is slime, gut and uh, the gills, they are the harbors or they carry uh, loads of microorganisms and from these surfaces the microorganisms they move to the different parts of the body and again from there they cause the spoilages. So when fish dies, uh, the bacteria attacks the flesh and it results in the formation of undesirable products. And what is the microbial load of the organism? What are the different microorganisms that can be seen on the surface of the fish? It depends upon the water from where the fish has been captured. So that is a very important parameter. Now the microbial spoilages, it includes conversion of TMAO. Fish is rich in uh, trimethylamine oxide and it is converted to trimethylamine which uh, gives off order or offensive order. And then second, we can see the degradation of amino acids to, uh, that is proteins, they are degraded to amino acids and they undergo further degradation to primary amines, again, which may result in poisoning. So one such example is histidine. Histidine is converted to histamine by the uh, organism Morganella, Morgani or Klebsiella pneumonia. So at 37, this is commonly seen in scombroidae family fishes where the, the histidine, the amino acid is converted to histamine and this is again and the same thing would what we say more mosquito bite it also contains histamine people who are sensitive to histamine they will uh, develop serious uh, disorders then tryptophan it, it is converted to indole and again uh, this is uh, an indicator of spoilage in shrimp and uh, degradation of urea and free amines to ammonia 
Uh, it also produces order. Then production of H2S, uh, dimethyl sulfide, methyl mercaptan, volatile sulfur containing compounds, esters of lower fatty acids like acetic acid, propionic acid, and butyric acid. These are short chain fatty acids which are also produced due to the microbial action. From the environment, uh, these fish may get contaminated with Salmonella, Shigella, Vibrio, E. coli, and Clostridium. So these are the, some of the microbial spoilages. And uh, the microbes, they also interfere with the color of the fish. Pseudomonas and Micrococcus, they provide or create yellow discoloration. And Sarsenia and Micrococcus or Bacillus, they are known for red and pink discoloration. The sporogenous yeast, it causes chocolate brown discoloration. The sour taste in the oysters is also an indicator of spoilage, which happens because of the proteolysis. And again, black discoloration, it is not because of the microbial, but then it is uh, because of the melanosis, melanin formation. And this can be prevented by dipping the sample or dipping the animal or shrimps in 0 0.2 to 0.5% metabisulfide. And black discoloration is very common in shrimps. It's an enzymatic reaction. Then yellow discoloration during freezing, it's not a spoilage, but it is a change in color, which uh, interferes with the aesthetic appearance. They have a perception about a commodity. And when they go to market and they get some slightly different, they hesitate to buy such products. And yellow discoloration does not cause any harm, but it happens because of the leaching of carotenoids from chromatophore to the tissue or the to the fatty layer and it causes the yellow discoloration. Again, brown discoloration, it is because of the lipid browning. Lip protein and lipid, they interact and causes browning. So these are some of the color changes that happens. It can be because of the microbes or it can be because of the biochemical degradation. Then we have to see the chemical spoilages. Usually the chemical spoilages, they happen at elevated temperature. And at this temperature, the most prominent chemical spoilage that one can observe is oxidation, that is oxidative rancidity. But we also observe degradation of macro components like uh, uh, proteins and fat and carbohydrates. Proteins, they are degraded to ammonia, hydrogen sulfide and amino acids. Amino acids, they are the base molecules for protein. When protein starts degrading, it is immediately converted to amine, amino acids. And these are further degraded to smaller molecules like amines and amino ammonia and hydrogen sulfide. Hydrogen sulfide is produced where sulfur containing amino acids are more in number. And carbohydrate degradation, these are uh, carbohydrates that is primarily glycogen. It is converted to acids, alcohols and gases. And usually it is a fermentative uh, degradation that is fermentative microorganisms are involved in this process. Then fat degradation, of course, it is uh, it can be hydrolysis or hydrolytic rancidity or oxidative rancidity and here you will find the activity of or action of lipolytic microorganisms which convert fats to fatty acids and glycerols. Apart from these spoilages, we also find some pollutants and toxicants that come from the environment to the fish which may cause or may act as a threat. Uh, so some of the uh, examples that can be seen in fin fish as combroid poisoning. Combroid poisoning, like I said, it happens because of the histamine. Histidine is converted to histamines and this is common in uh, scombroid fish. And next one is uh, cigatura fish poisoning, then puffer fish poisoning. For puffer fish poisoning, uh, recently we had a news about elderly couple, they were killed because of the consumption of puffer fish because it's, it happens that the retailers, they catch the fish and they de-skin it. Usually, Puffer fish, their skin has to be removed. The skin is uh, rich in toxins, so the skin has to be removed. But when the skin is removed, it is very difficult to identify the fish from where the meat has come. And because of this, the elderly people, they were not able to understand that it is from a puffer fish and they had consumed and within 24 hours, the both had passed away. And uh, again, sardine is, again, it, is, it could be because of the algal bloom. The sardine poisoning can be seen, hallucinogenic fish poisoning, paralytic fish poisoning, all this happens because of the contamination of the fish, because of the algae or the water being contaminated. The environment will be contaminated and which will be passed over to the consumers. In shellfish poisoning, we can see paralytic shellfish poisoning, neurotoxic shellfish poisoning, diuretic shellfish poisoning, amnesiectic shellfish poisoning. These are some of the poisonings common to shellfish. And apart from this, we also see uh, contaminated water poisoning because of the heavy water that is industrial discharges, they enter into the water and they cause uh, poisoning because of the deposits of heavy metals in the muscle tissue. 
and again contaminated water they contain high amounts of blue green algae and uh, that is cyanobacteria and fisteria and fisteria like uh, organisms which produce brevitoxin and which also uh, cause as a uh, spoilage or it is not the spoilage of the animal but these can be deposits or it can be the reason for contaminations of the muscle tissue which makes the product unsuitable for the consumers. Now how to detect the quality of the fish? We have seen different spoilages, how it happens and uh, how it can be understood that the spoilage has happened. Clear idea has to be done like we get a sample, we have to know whether the sample has been spoiled or not. So there are different methods to identify it. There are physical method, chemical method, biological method. Then of course we have subjective and organoleptic method. Uh, in physical method, we commonly use storimeter. So you can see storimeter here. It's an equipment and uh, it's very commonly used for detecting the freshness of the fish. It is vertically placed on the surface of the fish and it gives the digital rating. And any value that is uh, above 10 it is considered as fresh and values below 3 it is considered as that the fish is spoiled. So, uh, and the values between 6 or the around 6, it is considered acceptable. Torimeter is very commonly used in commercial uh, industries. And subjective method, it includes uh, sensory or organoleptic, both are one. Sensory, you can either call it sensory method or organoleptic method. And in this case, a person will use all the five senses, that is sight, smell, taste, they will touch and they will feel and see how the product is. So all the senses are being used. In this method, we also use the same test we had seen earlier, where you check the gills, you uh, check the eye, thumb impression, whether it is retained or not. So these are the sensory methods that can be used uh, under this category. And then we have biochemical methods. Proximate testing is the very common test that is done whenever a fish sample is collected. In this one detects the moisture, protein, uh, lipid content and the ash content. But generally this is not accepted because it sometimes it gives a false result. And because protein it is for example it is uh, usually done by Geldal method. In Geldal method all the nitrogens will be converted or we detect nitrogen and which is converted to protein. So in Geldal method all the nitrogens will participate in the reaction. So it, it need not be from the protein it can be from other sources also. So any nitrogens that are formed by contamination or microbial spoilage, these will also be calculated along with the protein. So that's why it, it gives a false result. Then hypoxanthin value is uh, very critical. We use a hypoxanthin value to identify whether the fish is fresh or not. It is generally said that a uh, value between 7 to 8 micromoles per gram indicates that uh, the fish has spoiled. Similarly, trimethyl amine, the, that is trimethyl amine oxide, it is converted to trimethyl amine because of the enzymatic reaction, a slight amount of TMA, the formation of TMA it is not there in the fish, but it is formed in the fish because of the enzymatic action. And a value of even 1.5 milligram is sufficient to say that it, the fish has undergone spoilage. Then another biochemical parameter is ammonia, which you can smell and uh, can identify. The presence of ammonia also indicates spoilage. Then peroxidase and TBA value, thiobarbituric acid value, uh, both are indicates the oxidative rancidity, whether the lipid has undergone any oxidation. And a value less than 10 for peroxidase value, it indicates that the fish is of good quality, whereas a value above 20, it indicates rancidity. In the case of TBA, less than 2 is accepted by the consumers. Now coming to the biological method, we can test the TPC, that is the first test usually done to identify the total count of bacteria. So total plate count can be done. And we can also go for a detection of individual bacteria if a person or if somebody suspects that a particular kind of microorganism might be there, you can go for selective methods and uh, use selective uh, media to detect the organisms. Usually for in such cases, we identify E. coli, Shigella and other coliforms uh, or fecal coliforms. So these indicate uh, the bacterial spoilage or the, it's a biological method to detect the contamination. So to conclude, in today's session, we have seen what are the different types of spoilages that may be seen in the fish and what are the uh, methods to detect these spoilages. We have seen biochemical methods, physical methods uh, like torimeter. We have also seen chemical methods and uh, subjective methods or the organoleptic methods by which one can detect and they can make out if the fish is spoiled or not. By using all these methods, we can uh, identify whether the sample has spoiled or not. 
So with these words, we'll let's wind up for today. Thank you.